this is Stumpy, and welcome to a Minecraft Let's Play video, and another video inside of Stumpy's uh, lovely world. Today in this episode, I'm going to be joined by Polly Reindeer, and Polly is finally here. Uh, she was meant to join me in the last episode, but she wasn't. I knew you would return today, because today we are doing redstone, which is Polly's favourite thing. No snowballs this morning. Normally we have a, uh, a rain of snowballs. Maybe she'd run out of her of snowballs, but it's good to, to see you back in my lovely world. Right then, uh, let's go inside of here and let's go and eat my breakfast, which is uh, today going to be a cake, I do believe. So let's go and eat this up first. Nom, 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 nom. Nom, 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 nom. There we go. Missed my mouth a few times, but there we go. I was able to, to eat that all up. But be a good morning to you. You can follow me as we begin things, as we so often do, uh, by going and heading to the, the Love Garden. If perchance you are new to the uh, lovely world area, uh, this is my Love Garden here. Every single day, uh, well, every single lovely world day, uh, I add someone to it in a sign and say thank you to them for some reason. The one rule about being added to the Love Garden is don't ask. And look at this. How do the animals know? Look, when I was adding people down in this corner down here. There was always a huddle of animals. The person I'm trying to add is right inside of this sheep. How do the animals know who I'm adding? I think they get all excited when I add a, a new sign down and they're, they're saying hello to the person. But excu excuse me, sheep, if you just... If I just nudge the sheep's bum just a little bit further back, I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry for, for adding you in this way, Gabe, but <laughs> maybe it will make it a bit more special. But yeah, I am adding Gabe to the Love Garden, and that is because they did an amazing drawing of uh, me and a bunch of my helpers, and they did real-life version of my helpers, and it's always interesting to, to kind of see human version of them, and uh, you can see them all surrounded by things that they love as well, and I love all of the extra little details that they were able to, to add in. So thank you so much for doing that, and welcome to my Love Garden, Gabe. And sheep, I want you to, to behave, please. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no no knocking down the, the signs uh, or anything. So, all right then, Polly, do you want to, to follow me? Uh, we'll go and uh, head over to the, the Love Garden, uh, and I can choose uh, not the Love Garden. We've just been to the Love Garden. I'm going to go to, what's this place called? The, the Dog House. That's where we're going to go to. <laughs> I always do that. I always just, I always say like, it's not like I, I completely mispronounce my word and say a wrong word, but I always just call things the wrong thing. And it happens absolutely all of the time. Normally, I don't notice, but luckily, I was able to, to notice that time. But anyway, uh, today, let's be joined by Sherbet. Let's be joined by Sherbet today. So Sherbet, uh, you can stand up and uh, you can follow me. Uh, Polly, you can follow me uh, as well. Uh, and we're going to go down to the, the teleporter. So the game we're building at the, the moment is a game called... I can do a, a good representation. Jump in! <laughs> it's a game called Jump in. It's a parkour platforming race mini game of the likes we have never seen in my lovely world before. And we got a decent decent amount of it done already. Today we're making the all of the mechanics work. We're going to do the, the redstone uh, to make sure the, the game works the way it needs to, to work. So it's uh, button number two, Polly, uh, is the, the button that you need to, to press to, to get closest to it. So let's go inside the teleporter, press the button, and we'll be over in the fun land at no time at all. Right then, I should be just about at my fun land now, so let's go and open up the, the door, and uh, let's go and head to, to where the, the mini game is. So as I said, it's a decent amount done already, so you can actually kind of play it. So it's a platforming race mini game where uh, you're going to be jumping around in a circle. The big thing that we're doing to today is getting all of these working. So we got all of the, the pistons and then the, the blocks on top of them. So basically all of the, the red blocks they're going to be going up and down as you play. So basically there's a, um, a pressure plate up at the, the top there. When you stand on it they're all either going to drop down or drop up which is just going to make the, the race kind of easier, either like easier or harder as you play. And hello Polly. <laughs> I don't know you sneaking up behind me like that. So right then let's, uh, let's go and get it working then. So so I guess we need to, to go downstairs first. Actually, there's one thing I need to do upstairs. So we have got the, the area prepared down here. Uh, William Beaver and me went and dug all of that away. So we are set to, to do the, the redstone. But the, the big main thing that we need to, to do is set up this area here. So that's the, the pressure plate, which when you jump on it, that's going to be the thing that sets up all the, the redstone. So let's uh, make a little hole here and we can go and link it all up. This was actually a rather tricky thing to work out because if I did a trail of redstone going down, there'd be all blocks here and it would be messy, there'd be redstone all over the place, and so I kind of came up with a, an easier way to, to be able to, to make the, the whole thing a little bit more compact. So instead of doing a massive trail of redstone, uh, what we can instead do is a piston, and I think the easiest way for me to do 
this. If I drop down, place the pistol. Actually, I can do it all from down here. I don't even need to, to go back up. So uh, let me go and make a redstone block. So basically, that piston's going to extend. It's going to push down a redstone block. And then that redstone block uh, is going to be the, the thing that sets absolutely everything else off. And uh, where do you make redstone blocks? I, th I think they're in, like, the, in this area here. It's always weird that you don't make redstone blocks in, like, the redstone tab. But it's in the it's in the, the make full-size block of items tab. So I guess that... <laughs> <laughs> that does make sense. So, right then, what we need to do then is we need to have it so there's redstone. Is the redstone supposed to be on this block here, I believe? Yeah, because if that gets pushed down once more, the redstone here is going to, to get lit up. And then this is going to be the, the thing uh, that lights up all of the, the rest of the, the redstone. So let's go and put a redstone torch onto uh, to this here uh, as well. Uh, just to, to kind of change the, the flow of the, the redstone. And then the, the start of the, the mechanism is going to, to begin here. And uh, let me explain what the, the mechanism is. Uh, so if you've been watching my videos for a while, you will remember my fascination with flip-flops. And when I say flip-flops, I mean T-flip-flops. So basically, if you don't know what a T-flip-flop is, it's a thing that you can do in redstone that basically makes it so that you can change either a, um, a pressure plate or a button uh, into a lever. So what I, it's going to do is mean that anytime anyone jumps on on that pressure plate, uh, it will basically switch the signal either on or off rather than just sending a little bit of a signal. And I've been making my T flip flops for, for years and I had kind of my, my set way that I did them, but I've got a new way. I've got an even better way to, to do them, which is more compact, easier to build and just looks cooler and just acts cooler. And it's just more like fun to, to watch actually it all happen. So <laughs> yeah, this is my, my new method to, oh, <laughs> Didn't realize that was going to lift up straight away. But yeah, this is my new method uh, for creating a T flip flop. So there's, uh, there's another addition that I need to, to make to this. I need to add a cauldron. And you might be thinking, why would I ever need to, to have a, a cauldron in order to, to make some sort of redstone thing? But the, the reason is, is because of... Oh, where are we in our cauldrons? Aren't they with, like, buckets and stuff? Yeah, there we go. So cauldrons work really well with comparators. So basically, if I put this cauldron on here, and then if that got lifted da uh, down, or pulled down, I guess, uh, I can have it so there's a comparator here. And if that cauldron is full of water, as it will be in a second, because I'm about to, to fill it full of water, that means that it would send a signal, but... But if the cauldron wasn't there, it wouldn't send a signal. So it's basically acting almost like a... Whoa! Hello, zombie! <laughs> it's almost acting basically like a redstone block. But the problem with the redstone block is that would be setting off everything else. It just means that when it's down here, it's going to activate the, the redstone. So now uh, we can just do a trail of redstone, which is going to be going off from, from here. And then that's going to be the thing that links everything else up. So let me go and make a bucket. Uh, and then with the, the bucket, I can go and fill the, the cauldron up full of, uh, of water. And then we can uh, go and fill it. Actually... Do you want to do you want to do me a favor Polly while you're standing around do you want to grab this bucket and go fill it up with water and then fill the, the cauldron here with water. Uh, there'll be water somewhere close by to around here. I hope that there'd be some just down here. There was, oh, oh, here we go. Oh, there's some, oh no, that's blue wool. <laughs> yeah, I thought there was water here, but it's just blue wool. Is there more on the other side over on this bit? No, okay. Sadly, no water down here, Polly. I'm gonna have to, to go up the, the ladder and found, uh, find some around up the, the top up there. Okay, right, so while Polly goes to, to do that, I'm gonna go and start linking up the, the rest of the, the redstone. So uh, the other thing I need to, to make are um, some repeaters because the, the way the comparator works is basically the amount of water in the cauldron uh, sets how far the um, the, the signal is going to, to go. Uh, so I think it's like a max of three blocks it can can travel. So we of course need to, to go and add a, um, a repeater down here just to make sure it can travel further. And then we can make the, the redstone trail go a little bit higher. And then all we really need to, to do once this thing's working, and I can't demonstrate it yet, by the way, I will demonstrate it, but I can't demonstrate it yet because we need water. And oh, Polly's got the water. And oh, hello, Sherbet. I'll be honest, I almost forgot about you you sherbet but it was a pleasant surprise when you showed up again down here so do you want to go and put the the water into the the cauldron there you might have to i don't know kind of go around the the side to to get it um to get it in and uh, while polly does that i'm gonna go upstairs and i'm gonna go and mark all of the the areas where the the pistons are because otherwise i'm gonna be completely guessing underneath which could be a game in its own right but for now uh, let's just go and break uh holes right next to, to where these are and i need to break the the blocks underneath them uh, as well i guess just to, to mark where these are so uh, the way this is going to work is there's going to be a redstone torch underneath every single one of these pistons and then we just need to link up a, a trail to them all 
so that they all get lifted up or lifted down at the, the same time. And the trick is, is to try and make the, the redstone as efficient as possible, so you have as few repeaters as possible. Because uh, to make the, the game fair, we kind of want them all to, to lift up and down at the, the same time. And so I don't want it to be a case of the, the pistons all the way at the, the back over there, which are far away, kind of have more of a delay. I mean, they're going to have a slight delay. It's impossible to have them literally going at the exact same time. But we want it to, to be uh, as fair uh, as possible for, for everyone. So uh, that's going to be the, the challenge but it's going to be pretty simple to, to be able to, to do. It's literally just a trail of redstone to them and the way that we did the redstone at the, the start means that uh, kind of having the, the torches uh, makes sense. And oh, something else we should add here is if I go and make a... Um a button, uh, then this should make it so that uh, we can go and uh, extend this and do it up and down. And actually, oh! Did you hear that? I think it might be, I think it might be working now. It might be all set up to, to go. So, oh yeah, look. See, look at this, look at this. Okay, we need to test this. So, Polly, you go upstairs. Wait, if you follow me, Polly, I'll show you, I'll show you what button you need to, to press. So, come up the, the ladder here, and if I get Polly to, to press the, the button, because uh, I want to show you what it looks like, because it does look cool the, the way it works, and so I need someone up here. So, you see this, uh, this button here, Polly, uh, the, the stone button. Uh, if you go and press that when I say, and then I can go and watch down here, and then we can see how it all works. So, press the button now, Polly, uh, so you can see that the redstone over there is now lit up. Uh, she presses it, and then the cauldron gets lifted up. Uh, and so now it's in this position, and the redstone's off. So press the, the button again now, Polly, and we'll see that the, the cauldron gets lifted down, uh, and now the, the redstone switched on. So that's how it works. That's my fancy new method for creating a T flip flop. So that works. That's uh, <laughs> that's step number one. And oh, <laughs> I'm sure I, thought I saw Sherbet sitting down over there for some reason. Right. So here are the. Um, the uh, the the underneath of the the the, the piston. So what's going to be the easiest way to do these torches? I guess I can jump. Seeing as I have these gaps here, let's just go and make a, a whole load of these torches now. So we're going to need at least one of these for every single one of them. So yeah, there we go. That's it lifted up. So what I think I'm going to, to do first is go around and put down all of the, the redstone torches first, and then I'll go around after that and won't worry about kind of linking them up with the redstone. It doesn't really matter if they're against the wall, but I like kind of doing them the same on the, the block. It literally makes no difference. So <laughs> don't worry about that if you decide to, to build the game. And remember, I often say this for the, the games, there is there is kind of a way you could play the game without this redstone, but it would basically just be like a normal like race. Then at that point, it is just a parkour race. You know, like I think it's a, a pretty decent parkour. I mean, I like it. <laughs> like I find it fun jumping around. It's kind of like designed around like the type of platforming that I enjoy doing. So there is a way you could play this game. But honestly, this redstone is so, so, so simple that, you know, you could just do this in a, you know, just very, very very simply and then kind of do your your own design for the the layer i think that's going to be the the best way because a lot of people do do their their own versions of these mini games and i think kind of doing the the same general concept and the the way the red solo works i think like mechanically it's pretty fine but it would be really interesting to see people doing their own layouts like maybe it's just one big straight line without any laps and when you get halfway through it changes or you know just simply where the the jumps are is different maybe you're going to do it so you're jumping over fences as well or over iron bars to make more tricky parts like there's so many Many different ways that you could do the, the layout. How is Sherbet? How is Sherbet sitting down over there? <laughs> I wasn't imagining. Look, is, is he gonna stand up? Then he stands up. Have dogs changed? Do dogs sit down now? When you, I didn't know that. I didn't know that dogs sat down like when you weren't with them like anymore. Has, has that been a thing for a while? Has that just been something that I've not noticed? I've never seen that. I've never known like a Minecraft dog to, to sit down unless I've actually been the, the one to, to go and tell them to, to sit down. That is completely new to, to me. That's pretty cool. I mean, it makes sense. Like the idea of a dog just only standing up and following you around like when you're there just seemed pretty crazy. Then again, my dog Alex, pretty much if we're going anywhere, she would follow us literally anywhere we go. So I guess that does make sense, but, but, sense, but eventually she would would like lie or sit down <laughs> but anyway I believe we've got all of the, the redstone torches linked up now. So all we need to, to do is uh, make sure that all of the, the redstone links up to, to all of them. So I think the best way to do this might be to... Well, let's not worry about repeaters for, for now. We'll add them all in later because what I can do is just look at the, the trail and just see exactly when the, the trail ends and then I can go and add repeaters that way. So let's just do like one big trail of redstone going down the, the middle like this and all. 
Have I not- have I failed to link that up already? Yep, I did. <laughs> let's go link that up to, to here. So let's do one big trail of redstone going down the, the middle, and then we can do kind of like little, um, little spider legs, I guess? Is that a good way? So little spaghetti legs uh, going off the, the side, and then that can go and link up with where all of the pistons are. And there we go, that's a, a good sound to, to hear, uh, all of the, the, the pistons getting set off. And is there a piston here? Is that- uh, oh yeah, there is one. There's one literally right here. So you just need to make sure that the redstone is going like this, so it's actually facing the the block and if it's awkward to, to fit it in uh, you could go and use a, um, a, a repeater if you if you need to if it's kind of on quite a, a tight corner so uh, Polly do you want to start uh, placing down some of the the redstone if I build the the blocks along uh, to mark where it needs to, to go uh, do you want to go and just start placing down some of the the redstone on top of them because uh, then that way if we work to, together uh, we're going to get it done much quicker than if I'm kind of just doing all of this myself so uh, this one needs to, to go to, to here these ones need to go to both of them. Uh, so these ones are going to need repeaters. Let's just go and place those repeaters down now. And uh, do you not have redstone on you, Polly? I think this might be the first time Polly doesn't have redstone. Have you not got any? Let me let me throw you some redstone so you can go and place them down. I don't I don't know any other time I've asked Polly if she uh <laughs> if she has redstone and she hasn't actually had redstone. So there we go. So she can start basically. Yeah. So if you place it just where the the dirt is. So all of the the dirt that I'm placing down. Uh, if you just go and do it on top of that, and then we can get it all linked up. Like at some point this trail is going to to end because I haven't added any repeaters on here yet. But if we just do it along to to here, we can see the exact cutoff point. So it looks like we need a repeater there. To to keep it going that way and I guess we're gonna need one there as well to go off in that direction. Uh, Sherbert, can you move out of the- Really, Sherbert? You're gonna stay? Okay, I'll do that repeater later by the- <laughs> By the looks of things, Cena Sherbert's decided to stand literally exactly where I needed to, to place the, the repeater. All right then, let's go and keep the, the trail of dirt going down this way. I, I haven't missed any. There seems to be like a, a really big gap here where there aren't any pistons. So I'm going to have to to have a bit of a test to go up at the, the top and uh, make sure that there aren't any that are, I've missed up. So we're definitely going to need another repeater along here somewhere. And oh, it goes quite far actually. Okay, looks like we only need the, the next repeater to be here. Uh, there's a bunch that we've missed in this area here though. So let's go and... Uh, do this one linked up there like that. And then the, there's actually not too many uh, more left to, to do. As I said, it's really quick and really quite a, a simple thing to, to be able to, to do, uh, to link these all up. It just takes a little bit of time just to, to get them all linked up, just because there's quite a lot of them. But of course, depending on how many that you uh, you do and how many, you know, ones that you go up and down, uh, it's just going to kind of affect the way it works. So right, these are two next to each other again. Uh, so we're going to have to to use repeaters for those ones there. Uh, Polly, you can carry on linking up the, the rest of that redstone. You are doing a dandy job, Polly, as you always do. Uh, this one, I need to make sure that the redstone links up properly, so let's kind of just loop it around a little bit, then that way we don't need to use another repeater, and that can loop around there like that. And then how many left? Uh, there's another two over here, so I'm going to have to make a couple more repeaters to be able to add these in. Well, let's make a few more, because I've missed uh, I've missed out some of the, the redstone down there, where I was supposed to add a repeater as well. So let's go and make uh, a few more of them. I don't know why I made, like, a whole stack of sticks then. <laughs> Didn't need that many. But yeah, let's go and make five more repeaters. This should uh, be enough to, to fill in the, the rest of the, the area. So uh, this redstone needs to go there and there like that. And then is this the last one? I believe I've probably missed some at some point, but I believe this might be the, the last one here. So let's go and link up that last bit of redstone. We do need another repeater. Let's add in the the repeater before it gets kind of twisty and turny there. It's kind of hard to, <laughs> to to get through because of the way that I've, I've built it all up. Like it's hard for me to, to fit through anywhere. But let's add the repeater there. And then this should be enough to, to keep this entire last area lit up. Yep, there we go. You can hear all of the, the pistons going. And then there's the one last repeater down here where Sherbert was standing in the, the way uh, that I need to, to go and light up. And that one should go there like that. And that should be enough to, to light up all of the others. Oh no, okay. That's just the red one I broke there. So there we go. Let's go and check the, the trail and let's make sure that all of the, the pistons are lit up and that we're, we're not missing any. I believe this looks good though. So I think it's done. I think the, the game's finished now. And I don't mean like finished for this episode. I mean like done as in the jump in mini game has been completely built. Let's test it first. Let's not start patting ourselves on the the back too early but it looks pretty good. So let's do one little jump around now and uh, let's see. Ah, why is this one up? Oh, oh, there's two of them. There's two of them here that are up. Why? Why are these ones up? Oh no, there's only one. There's one which is up. Okay, let's let's just go and do another check around. So there's one which is wrong there. Let me just make sure there aren't any. I don't actually need to, to jump around, I realize. <laughs> I can't just go and run through a check. It is fun to jump around, but might be a little bit quicker to, to run around. Okay, so it looks like there's there's one which I've got wrong, but all of the, the other ones are right. So let's just go and uh, jump down here and uh, see what is what is so wrong with uh, with this one here. Ah! 
Ah, okay, see what I mean? This is exactly what I was talking about. You see the redstone, it goes right next to it, but it's not actually going into it. So I think all I need to do is do one little like extra corner around here, uh, and then that should be able to, to set the piston. Well, pull it down. There we go. That should be all of the, the redstone complete. So we can test it now, Polly. We can have a a, a test jump, I, I guess. Uh, I do have a, a bunch of holes that I need to, to go and fill in with the uh, magenta concrete. Uh, here's some uh, magenta concrete for, for you as well, Polly, at the, the top of the, the ladder. Uh, so any of the, the gaps down here, we can go and fill these in. Uh, these shouldn't affect any of the, the redstone. And then we can have a, a go. So the way it should work is they all start off up at first. So basically the... The, the racetrack is easier uh, to begin with because uh, the, the red blocks make it much easier and uh, not even necessarily easier, but just a, a quicker, faster route for you to be able to, to make it round. And so basically once one person has completed a, a full lap and hit the, the pressure plate, then everything just gets way, way, way more difficult as all of the, the red blocks go and start getting lifted down. So that should be uh, all of the, the gaps filled in. Uh, so let me go up to the, the top here. And uh, we won't do a natural race because it doesn't really matter too much. Let's just go and do a, a bit of a, of a test to go and uh, see if one of us can uh, complete a, a lap uh, to see how well we can go. So there we go. They're, they've all been lifted up. They should stay up and they have. So let's go and make my way around. So I can go and jump on the, the red one here. Kind of do this little shortcut and go around there. This is a really big shortcut. That bit there takes way longer without the, the, red, ones, uh, the red ones up. So we will experience that in a second once I make my way around. Uh, another little shortcut here. And oh, wait a minute. These... Oh, there's another one. Oh, these ones are down. There, there's a bunch more that are down here. Okay, I'm glad I, I'm glad I had this test. Right, what's gone wrong with these ones here? Ah, <laughs> I can see what the problem is. I just missed them. I just completely missed them. That is why we have ourselves some tests to go. So there's one there, and then oh, they are, they are quite hidden. To be fair, aren't they? They are pretty hidden. So let's go and add these ones that in here. Uh, luckily, we got like the the big trail of redstone going the entire way around. So we only need to to add two extra little tiny bits to to be able to to make these ones uh make these ones work. But yeah, definitely glad that I was able to, to spot this uh, before we went to, to have our jump in tournament. So I need to place that one there. This one I've already placed it on. So yeah, I literally need to add a little a little trail of redstone going across there like that. And let's go and fill the, the gap in. And then another one down here like that to, to there. Uh, and then there we go. These should be ready to, to go. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> right then, well let's let's just go. As soon as we, we pretty much made our entire way around, let me just go and have a, another go jumping round. But this time uh, let's go and press the, the button and let's do it with all of the, the red blocks down uh, just to see how different it's going to, to be. So let's go and press the, the button. They should all drop down and stay down of the ones in the, the corner down there working. We'll see uh, in a little bit, a uh, little minute uh, when we get our way to there. But first, uh, let's go and jump our way around then. So this time I kind of need to, to pretty much just exclusively stay on the, the green ones. You can see just how much longer this section is here. I've got to go all the way around the outside to here, then all the way around the outside to there. You can do it pretty quick, but it takes a lot longer. Here you need to uh, quite a, a steep turn and this is quite a slow bit as well because there's quite a few awkward little jumps uh, that are quite difficult to, to do it uh, looks like these pistons have all been sorted properly and then here's the the zigzaggy part which is my favorite part you can do that part really fast but it's a little bit scary we get to the the top there and then that is going to, to lift them all back up again uh, ready for the the next lap so it's working it looks like it is completely working my jump in mini game is uh, is complete and in the, the next episode uh, we can come back here and we we'll have a uh, william and fizzy here as well and we'll all have ourselves a jump in tournament to see who is going to be the parkour master. I do have a bit of an advantage just because uh, I kind of designed it and I've had a lot of practice doing it, but I have a, a lot of very talented helpers as well, so I'm going to be looking forward to seeing how well everyone's going to, to do. But for now, I'm going to say a very big thank you to you, Polly, for helping me out throughout the entire episode and giving me your redstone expertise. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to Sherbert, wherever he is sitting down by himself right now. <laughs> He's probably just off exploring somewhere in the, the area. And of course, I want to say a very big thank you to you for watching. But that is the end of this episode here. There'll be a link in the description to the next one when it's online. But for now, I will see you all later. Bye!